Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be going through and rebuilding the hand clutch on this tractor. I'm using used parts. Um, this is a D19 diesel that we just overhauled. However, this is going to get you in the ballpark for any of them. Um, especially once we get inside to the hand clutch, everything is identical. Um, your D17 and um, 14s, 15s, they're going to have one less clutch per pack in the clutch pack. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, stick around and I will educate you for sure. So, I'm going to quit blabbing and we'll get right to it. So to start with, I'm going to take this off. Obviously I got the fluids drained out of it, but um, we're going to take this plate off. And we're going to get this out of here. Uh, first thing is disconnect your cable here for the power booster. You just pull that, push the pin down through, that's out of the way. Take the bolts out, the clip here, um, disconnect the lines, and then we'll take that off of there quick. Alright, so got everything out of the way. Got these disconnected. You loosen that one and you can get enough space to get this all out of here. Um, so I'm going to zip these off and bring it right back. So there's the plate. I want to point out that bolt right there. You want to leave that on there. And then that'll keep your relief valve on the back of there. Um, and something else when you're doing this, there's two O-rings. There's an O-ring that goes inside of each one of those. Uh, it's always a good idea to get those and replace them. Uh, because they seal onto those pipes right there. Um, so now we got this all apart. Next step is getting the shaft out, which we're going to go over to the other side take the clip off. Alright, so we got the platforms off. Uh, this was a little bit more of a pain because of all the tin work for this cab. Um, but anyway, we got all that off. We got the platform on the other side off. Walk you around here. Uh, yeah, everything's off of here. So now we've got the lines disconnected under here. We've got all of this stuff, you know, the guard off. Um, we're going to be taking this down. Now there's a pin right over there, right back there. That I've got out already. Uh, and then you got four bolts that hold this up, these inch and an eighth bolts here. Inch and an eighth head. Uh, so, anyway, we're just going to put a jack under there, take that down. And the reason we got to do that, uh, this cab doesn't allow for you to take lines off very easily. Um, so, we're just taking that out so that we can push these lines down and we'll be able to get this past it then so uh, cabs creating some issues but we knew it was gonna right so in order to take that hand clutch shaft out you gotta take the plate off of the side if your tractor's got it on there uh, you don't have to take any of this off to get to it but uh, it needed to come off so anyway um, there's a flat washer and a little clip ring. Pop that off and then we're just going to clean that up real nice and uh, pull it through. I'll show you how it works inside then real quick. Okay, so I've got that shaft moving. That should just pull right out. You may need to tap on the other side a little bit. but um, So you got the keyway right there, which you got to pull that out far enough so you can take that keyway off. And then see if I can get you a view with this cab it's hard there's another one right in there you got to take that off um, which there's just enough room to get your hand in there and uh, the o-rings need to come off of here as well that uh, I mean means I'm not gonna save it I'm just gonna pull it out but uh, I guess I said that wrong when you put it back in, the O-ring has to go on after you get it through that back hole. So the back O-ring has to go on. It's kind of a pain in the rear end, but um, it happens. I'm going to pull this out, pull them keyways off, and if there's anything that I'm forgetting to mention here, I'll bring you back. 
All right, so shaft pulled out. Both of my keyways fell down in there, but that's all fine. I know where they're at. Uh, that that piece there, I'll just shimmy out. Uh, but I wanted to work my phone here before my hands were all oily. Um, the reason they have you put the o ring, this back o ring on, as it's going through, is just so that you don't booger it up, uh, sending it through the that shaft right there twice, because it's pretty easy to cut it. Um, so I think we're pretty much at that point. Um, we got to get the rear end blocked up yet. That's the setup for that. It blocks here so that it can't pivot, and then ratchet strapped in. Um, and everything's nice and clean under there so that'll just slide out and then there'll be a bottle jack here holding that up and uh, in the back in case it wants to get over center or something that way it can't go tip backwards as well um, not saying it's the safest situation we got going on here but it's what we got right now and there's no reason it won't work okay so we got this split um, we did it the hard way and as soon as we got it split we remembered the easy way is you get it jacked up and you get pressure on both of your jacks and then you just kind of slowly go up and down with them each and it splits that. It's the easiest way to get it apart. Uh, we used a block over there, there's a lip and a sledgehammer um, and we managed to get it uh, but I think we got lucky doing it that way. A lot easier to use your jacks. Uh, we got a split now and it's going to get separated yeah this is where it gets a little scary maybe I'll set you up on the tripod you guys can watch us be paranoid all right you can see right here Bob remembered these studs to go in here um, make things a little less scary
you guys get the idea. We got to disconnect the clutch rod. Um, the line for the power booster gauge is stuck. We got to disconnect the clutch rod. Uh, it's just a pin. He already did it. Okay. Well, I guess we'll, we'll finish the, the split. Basically, we gotta get it all the way up here. That's fine. Huh? So that's gonna be a lot easier to work on. Probably help you get it to get the snapper and go. All right, we're gonna keep pushing this thing forward like this. You guys get the point. Obviously, it takes two. Okay. So now we gotta take this snap ring out. There's a spacer right behind it. That way we can get these gears out, these hubs. And then there's another snap ring back in there to take off. Then the whole thing will slide off of that shaft. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take that out. You don't need to see that. Just a bunch of cussing and all that fun stuff, you know. Once you get that first snap ring out, that spacer slides out of there. It's kind of a tight fit, but it does slide out. Work at it. And then them come out. Pay attention to which way you put them in there. And take them out, but you can see that there's a recess for it to sit onto that um, the other gear in there. Which then that one slides out. Try your best to keep all of your plates lined up because it's got to slide past all of those. I'm going to take that out and bring it right back. So now that that gear is out of there, I have another snap ring all the way back there. And that entails uh, some more flathead screwdrivers and a few more curse words. So we'll, we'll bring you right back for that after that. Alright, so here's this hand clutch on the bench. Uh, you want to start off making sure you got it in neutral and um, pull the pins here. These, they're these, these little stupid clips that are a pain, but um, and once you do that, you get your arms here off of it. Um, so here's where they snap in. Let me get this camera to focus. Here's where they snap in. High and low. Um, this plate's... This plate's got some wear on it. I've got a good plate over here. Um, once I get it out and get to looking at it a little bit better, we'll make a better decision on that um, but if your clutch is adjusted correctly and it's still just kind of falling in and out of the high or low side it's these groove marks here they get wore flat or wore down into it and then it doesn't pop into gear correctly because that's this this roller here the roller pops onto the back and these ridges kind of pop onto the front up here as you can see the double ridge uh, but anyway we're going to keep taking this apart uh, next I'm going to take these off Spain, paying special attention when we take it all apart not to lose any springs in there um, get all of our shim packs out and all that stuff real quick bring you right back all right something I didn't mention is there's another plate just like this down on the bottom Bob pointed it out that I didn't explain that correctly um, which is you know it's just the snap for your low side or your high side so um, 
want to show you guys this as well. This is how I knew that this clutch was toast. If you look there, there's no shims here, and that's you're not even supposed to do that. But somebody completely shimmed it out, put all the shims in the middle. Um, it looks like they did get the shim packs and used all the long ones in there. So that's one thing that it's got going for it. But uh, yeah, the the high side of the clutch is it is it's toast. Um, the low side was still engaging, but with the amount of shims they got in there left in there, it's it's pretty well toast too. So um, yeah, I've got these I've got these bolts out now. This casing is going to lift up off of here. Um, and I'll bring it right back after I do that and get these shims situated. One more thing, guys. Uh, probably the most important thing that I almost didn't mention. Well, that I almost didn't do myself, actually. These cases, the two separate cases are balanced. So you need to mark these so that you know how to put this back together. Um, it'll go back together any any configuration. However, they're balanced, like I said, so you got to make sure that they go back together the same way you took it apart. Um, and I just got a center hole punch and I'll put some uh, some holes right there and I'll know. Simple as that. Um, so then, uh, like I said, this just, as you can see, it just pulls up off of here. So I'm going to mark that, pull it off, and rebound. Okay, so once the cage is off, this piece is laying on there. I, should, I guess I shouldn't have taken it out, but that piece is laying on there. You see you've got the, the holes here these springs come up through it at each point. Um, pay notice to the springs. Um, I believe it's the low side, yes. The low side has an extra clutch plate. So the spring is a little bit longer on the low side. Something to keep in mind and that's obviously because of the extra clutch plate. Um, so then you got your shims. So there's only a couple in here. I'm going to take these and just throw them over here. Okay, and then each one of your clutch plates comes off. As you can see, there's some stuff missing. Um, this one right here, you can see the wear there, and then if you go like that, you can see it's it's warped. So that's no good. Uh, these, they look straight. We'll measure the thickness of them and I'll explain the, what the book says for the thickness here once we get to that. Um, but a couple of these plates I'm hoping will be uh, savable. Like this one doesn't look too bad, but like I said, we'll measure them all. And we'll go from there. Right now I'm just taking them out here and I'm going to set them over here in a line. Bring you right back. Alright, so once you get, yeah, once you get down to this, that you just, you literally just keep taking it apart. Um, that's ridged pretty bad. Uh, I hope we've got a I hope the other ones in the spares that we have are in better shape because that's ridged pretty bad. It would still work, I guess, but um, anyway, like I said, we just keep taking it apart just like this until we get everything out. Um, and then once we get to measuring things, I'll bring you back and we'll uh, talk about what thicknesses they're supposed to be and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so. I got all these plates out. These are the high side plates. Um, just visually looking at them, they don't look that bad. I haven't measured them yet, um, but especially these these clutch plates, they've got they've got a lot of material left on them. There's not a lot on them to begin with. Um, so uh, found some other things wrong with this. That is the cause, the root of the cause, I believe. If you notice this roller, see how down, it's down inside of there, it's loose. Um, if you look at this roller, they should be set up a little bit because the roller is supposed to make the contact. Well, on this, there's actually two missing. This one's gone. 
and that one's gone and this one is definitely on its way out and yesterday when we took the when we split the tractor we found these in there inside of the torque tube there and I at the time I couldn't put two and two together what they were uh, but now I know there's them two rollers on the high side broke off and the third one was going to break off um, which is why they had it adjusted all the way because obviously that wasn't snapping it shut right clearance is all screwed up um, so yeah this is the plate from the bottom of this one and you can see how wore out it is I mean the roller it was wore out with just the roller here in the middle but then them two arms were catching and I mean it was it was really digging in so there wasn't a lot left on them snaps either that's a shot so we've got is it this one yeah this one here um, it's got a little marking on it but actually that that's in really good shape that'll be just fine so um, I'm gonna measure these uh, these here I'm interested in I'm wondering how much slip and how much wear we've got on them and uh, we're gonna go from there uh, one other thing that I found the ridge right here that's no good now um, I'm lucky enough to have parts so we're gonna use another basket down here that doesn't have the ridges in it however if, if you got a good machine shop near you um, they can take torch powder and fill that back in and machine it back down and it's a lot cheaper than buying a new one trust me uh, but it means we got we got two good baskets well one good basket for sure we haven't taken the other one apart so we didn't need to so um, we're just gonna use you know parts that I've got obviously um, so that's yeah that's that I'm gonna get the caliper out measure stuff um, and then we'll go from there guys uh, one more little thing on the the ridge that's inside of there uh, not exactly sure what caused it but um, this is the plate somehow that got bent in there and uh, if we look on the edge you can see maybe like right here especially is, is where it was you know not riding in there plumb and was catching that that ridge all the way around you can see that side it wasn't just visual inspection of these other ones this appeared to be the only one that was rubbing and it's like I said it's bent right there you can see the wear mark on it um, so I'm not exactly sure what caused that uh, I, I'm gonna say just improper adjustment um, I mean I guess this could happen over time but it seems like maybe they, somebody had had tightened it too far at some point uh, I mean it was it was tightened too far with the way that they had it shimmed no shims in the high side um, but I'm sure they tried to do that maybe after these broke I would think because anyway let's let's measure these before I make any more assumptions all right so here we've got the measurements um, so a new spline plate 117 thousandths to 123 thousandths now that is that plate right there with the splines on it um, now keep in mind those measurements are for a new plate um, so as they wear you know that's where the shims come and play um, you know if you measure these and they're at 114 thousandths or something like that um, if it's a tractor that you're going to farm a couple hundred acres with every year maybe you'd think about getting new ones but this is a show queen uh, something that's going to see 10 acres of plowing every year uh, going to the tractor pulls it's going to be just fine uh, probably last longer than you're alive and that's considering you're only 20 um, so anyway the metal plates here with the tangs on them the separator plates they call them here uh, basically look at 74 to 76 thousandths in thickness a new one um, which we're we're actually right in specs for all of these on the parts that I've got here uh, so that makes that makes me happy um, now another one to measure it's not as important but definitely something to take a look at um, your separator washer here 118 to 124 thousandths now what that is or not separation I'm sorry the pressure washer 
Um, now what that is, is this piece right here. This would be the pressure washer. And then you can see the free height. So from your bottom flat up should be, uh, what's this say here? 270 thousandths to 302 thousandths. Um, now where that pressure plate is, is if you remember these uh, snaps here, so you take this ring out, there's a spacer there, but then that washer plate is right there. That's that plate right in there. Um, there's two of them inside, one on the high side and one on the low side. Um, some of these ridges, they're they're not real bad. Um, you can feel them with your finger, but after measuring, they ha they're not wore very bad. And you can feel that here. It's it's really about the same thickness um, as the tangs out here that don't get wore down. And I I know from experience um, these these will be just fine. Um, it'll work like a new clutch when we're done here. So uh, I'm definitely going to be reusing these parts. Pretty much everything except for this bent plate here. Uh, then we'll get another casting and uh, something I I knew this uh, but completely spaced it. It's a D17 casting and there's one less less clutch per side. You know, there's one less in the low and one less in the high. So the casings are different. Um, anyway, long story short, I've got a oh down there. There's a D19 chassis I got from Ted when I did his LP D19. And um, we're hoping that the casing is good enough. Because uh, what, what happens here is as these splines wear out, uh, and one might get out of alignment, it might last a really long time. But when you got this ridge in here, uh, as you're shifting gears, you can catch that and it'll bend them. And which is probably how this one got bent but I, I said it's kind of for debate what happened first did it get bent and, and then created the ridge or um, was it out of whack created the ridge and then got bent don't know um, but I, I can't say that the teeth in here are definitely more worn on this one than the others so that's I'm guessing that's what it was it was moving on the on the hub in there so um, I'm going to get that other thing out uh, as far as putting it back together I'll bring you back and I'll talk about the shims um, just put the springs in and uh, most of the technical stuff is done and we move on to adjusting it once I get it back in the, in the tractor here's the clutch out of that other tractor and as you see that's some broken plates in there it all looks pretty fresh and the engine on this was locked up. It's actually the engine that I got over there. Um, I'm hoping that that just happened, uh, like trying to pull it and unlock the engine. We'll see. Take it apart, see how the basket is. Hold our fingers crossed. Other than that, it hasn't been shimmed very far. So that's a good sign. Um, take it apart and see what's in there real quick. Well, we got lucky. That's in good shape. The rollers are all in good shape. <clears throat> Top half is in good shape. There's a, you can see that marking. The camera's making it look worse than it is. Um, you can't really feel that with your fingers, so I'm gonna sand it down a little bit and we're gonna send it. So now it's just uh, reverse the process, put everything back in here. Okay, originally, uh, if you got a new clutch, your shim should be 90, 90, and 25 in the center. Um, this one here was adjusted some and it had 50 in the center. And uh, use the clutch plates. Just Anyway, that's where I'm starting is 50, and then we got 75 and 80 on uh, the outside so um, just put it together like that and then I'm gonna do the fine adjustments when it's in the chassis uh, you see I got it stacked up here now we can take this 
make sure we get it lined up with our notches wherever they may be they're on one of them and uh, bolt it back together and put it back in the tractor so the only thing I can say when you're putting this back together is when you put these pins in and these clips make sure you got them facing the same way as you took them out because that's the with the rotation of the engine um, that way you know the force is pushing that way instead of that way on your clip um, other than that it's just a reverse process of how you put it back how you took it apart um, <clears throat> this is ready to go back into the tractor with it so that ring clip is back on there it's pain in the arse didn't hear much cussing out of Bob though doing it um, next is your tang washer here that goes in and make sure that the tangs are in the holes quite obviously and then your gears your spacer and the big ring clip I've got a better video more in depth on how to adjust this and I'll put the link in the description below and I'll also tag that video at the end it'll be up in the corner um, but here's a few things you need to know about this so your starting thickness of all your shims is 205 thousandths you got 90 thousandths on the outside on each outside and 25 thousandths in the center that's a new clutch everything brand new um, as it wears out you take shims out of either one and you need the long shims to put back into the center long shims always go in the center these are the short shims they go on the outside and the long shims are they're just longer go in the center um, so in order to measure the clutch this gap right here and this gap right here uh, this is the high side this is the low side so with it engaged you measure with feeler gauges or however you get whatever you got to do it I use feeler gauges and a caliper um, and then you engage it and you measure that again so you write down your engaged and disengaged and you do that to three spots to do that in on both sides of the clutch so once you do that you get a engaged and a free you know you add those three together I don't need to tell you how to average numbers but um, you get the average of your uh, distances there so on the high side that's what I ended up with with just starting I had to move two fifteens so that just means I had to take two short fifteens out of each place here and put two long fifteens here on the low side um, oh I kind of skipped skipped one but this is what the distance should be so after you that's you got the free and the engaged and you subtract it and there's thirty thousandths distance in between there it should be 42 to 48 so then you move your shims accordingly um, for me so you can see I only had 15 thousandths and 30 thousandths on the low side so moving 115 brought that up to 45 thousandths right within specs moving two 15s brought it up to 45 thousandths right in specs um, so then yeah that's that's the gist of it it's not that complicated um, you don't even really need to get into algebra to do it <laughs> so uh, this one's adjusted as you can see it's it's getting thin on them but I'm sure it'll last long as I need it to last I'll probably never have to do anything with it again as much as this will get used so makes us happy now it's time to put this thing back together all right here it is I don't know how well the camera is doing but you can hear it snap feels like a new clutch we're happy with it so I hope uh, hope I covered everything I hope I didn't leave too many questions out there but if you have any questions uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments below and if you're in the area and need 
something like this done, don't hesitate to ask. Um, so with all that being said, I appreciate everybody for watching and I uh, hope to catch you on the next one.